Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mildra, and I will be your Gaming Monk for the evening. I've talked about the folly of genre assumptions in fantasy gaming, and to a lesser extent in science fiction, but never superheroes, so let's fix that. Now, in my opinion, superhero RPGs are the embodiment of walking a tightrope because of the sheer variety of options present in any superhero story or universe. This is doubly so if you're trying to make a lower tier type of campaign. Street level heroes, if you will. Because of the way character advancement works in general, it can be hard to have characters that focus solely on a localized city or area, or even multiple ones at once. Because superhero games tend to have a broad focus, a directed experience of a certain type of superhero is typically addressed in a source book at best. This week's entry seeks to rectify this situation. Created by Richard Rogers, Hit the Streets, Defend the Block aims to place its focus solely on street-level heroes like the Heroes for Hire, Daredevil, or The Question. How does it hold up? Let's find out. Hit the Streets is a fairly light read at only 108 pages, with some large text and a visual presentation that I can best describe as Night Mode. This works especially well since all the text is in panels to reflect its nature as a comic book. There's a few parts of the writing that I think try a little too hard at being too cool for the room, but that's a personal taste kind of thing, as in-style writing is a difficult thing to balance. The art is pretty simple and can give off the vibe of an early indie comic, also helping the theme here. What does not help is the lack of an index or of proper PDF bookmarks. While the table of contents does have hyperlinks, I have to abide by my rules here. Now Hit the Streets aims to place detail on characters in and out of costume, referred to as SPBs, or Superpowered Beings. We'll be exploring this with Ashton Stone, also known as Ash. The first step after establishing a basic identity is Role, which is important within team composition. Of the six roles, we'll go with Wild One to reflect Ash's adaptive nature and preference towards getting results. Step two is determining Role Dice. You have to be in two modes of Be Normal and Be Super. This reflects whether you're doing an action as a cape or not, a nickname for SPBs. One of these rolls grants one die and the other grants three. In our case, Be Normal will get one die and Be Super gets three. Step three is stats. Hit the Streets has six stats to build a potential die pool out of. Head, which is cognitive function. Jaw, your social abilities. Heart, your compassion. Hands, your strength. Feet, your reaction time and general dexterity. And tools, your technical know-how. We'll start with two stats at three, two at two, and two at one. In our case, we'll go with head three, jaw two, heart two, hands three, feet one, and tools one. Step four is powers, the things that make an SPB, well, an SPB. We can choose two powers from the list, and using them adds two die to potential rolls. In our case, we'll go with Substance Control, Ash, and Body Modification, Ash Form. Step 5 is our starting spark. This isn't a character's maximum spark, just what they start with. This is rolled as a D6 plus 6. In our case, we'll start with 12. Character creation runs fairly simple, but this is one particular case where I am weirdly less fond of assigning numbers instead of doing a point by. Now it could be argued that it's taking this route to prevent players from being average in all areas, but the issue really dawned on me with the mode part of creation. Additionally, I feel like the powers presented here are a bit lacking in nuance, with the whole make up a new one part feeling like a bandage. It's alright, but I feel like there's going to be a no man's land issue for the more creative of, well, character creators. As hinted at earlier, Hit the Streets uses a D6-based die pool. When taking action, you build a pool based on a stat and a mode, adding one if you're within your role and two more if your power applies, except for super stat since it has its own rules. Any die result of four or more is a success, and these are compared to a difficulty number 
to determine success or failures. In some situations, the GM may declare that tension rules apply, in which case any one's roll causes you to lose one spark, regardless if you succeeded or not. This is, of course, capped by the roll's difficulty. Spark counts as both health and extra effort, and you can spend this to add an extra die to your roll for that of a teammate. Beyond that, the game is fairly crunch light, and combat doesn't have much in the way of special rules different from normal die rolls. This also means it's not outright stated how much damage is done from attacks, but one would assume it's a contested roll with the damage equal to the difference. I freely admit I am not fond of this extra effort being akin to health as much as I would be with extra effort in other systems. I feel like this will lend itself more to players being defensive in encounters when role-playing is about them being more proactive than reactive. I'm also wondering why there isn't something to balance out the rule of ones with tension when a six is rolled. I think it'd be an easy opportunity to get players to not play defense in these situations, a kind of high-risk, high-reward thing. That said, the material for building the neighborhood and its inhabitants is pretty spot on, but that leads to the overall issue. The words that kept popping up in my head as I was working on this is decent but lacking nuance. I'm iffy on that phrasing on its own, but that's what comes to mind when it comes to the actual crunch. The things I found for, to my liking more were in the group-based approaches, like map building and the emphasis on superhero teams rather than individuals. However, I feel the way character creation and advancement is designed lends itself more to one-shots or short arcs than anything beyond that. There's also the fact that any drawback from powers are in the narrative sense instead of anything mechanical. And yes, I believe you can do both because I've seen it happen. I've done it. As the saying goes, the devil is in the details, and there's just too many little things that keep me from giving the game higher marks, especially in comparison to its superhero contemporaries. As such, the highest grade I'm willing to give the game is playable. While it does its job mostly of being a street-level kind of game, I feel that, much like I stated with 7C 2nd Edition, this is the writer's vision of a street-level game, and not a sandbox in the purest sense of that idea. To put it another way, instead of being street level, it's a little too focused on being Frank Miller. It's not bad, but I can't shake the feeling that it needed more time to cook. <laughs>